favorite, our favorite Canadian. Don't tell Dom Zempronia. Yeah. Uh, Dom who? <laughs> <laughs> our Jason favorite Thompson. Canadian, Jason Thompson, in the house. Hey boys, hey boys. How Jason. are you, buddy? Yeah, dude, I'm I'm good, man. I'm hanging in there. It's great to see you both. As an 18 year old in Italy with other similar aged models, yeah. how did the debauchery compare to 18 year olds in Canada? I'd say Canadians were probably worse. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, you know, more drinking, a lot more drinking. I, I was still trying to get my feet wet a little bit. I didn't know what was going on. I was pretty naive at this point, you know? Sure. Uh, it took me a couple of years to kind of get going, but I did get going. <laughs> <laughs> we used to do this thing, it was hilarious. It was called Dancing for Dollars, which would, you would like, in order to make extra cash away from the agency. Yeah, they're, that, they're, those they, are called strip clubs. That's called Magic Jason. <laughs> yeah. Not far off. Not far <laughs> off. But they would like come and pick you up, you and a couple buddies. They would drive you out to a discotheque. And, um, discotheca. Yeah, exactly. You know, they're kind of like outside of the city in, in, in Italy. And, and so you'd go there and you would basically be. They would lie to basically everybody and say like, hey, Jason Thompson from Baywatch. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. And then you go there and you just be like, dee, 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 dee. and then like, you were kind of candy. They would then put a rope up and you were like, you know, kind of? in a zoo where they would, people would come by and like, you know, meet you and say hi. And then they would like, you know, if somebody was like cool or whatever, they'd let them in behind the velvet rope. And we were just their props, but they would pay us a couple hundred bucks to like, we, we would go, go and, you know, get groceries with. a little bit. But how long did you have that shoe? Do you still have that shoe? I still have the shoe. You we have just, the we, shoe. We, I have the shoe. We sold our house two months ago and, uh, and, and I have it. And I was like, I'm keeping this shoe, man. <laughs> this is amazing. So the shoe, when, uh, you know, I, I was uh, a janitor on night shift. So they gave me some really nice janitor shoes. Pure and a really nice, shoe. You had a really nice helmet at the time too. Yeah, so kind of like this one nice I have on shoes. now. Yeah. yeah. So, so the shoes were, I, I mean, I didn't want to say they're janitor shoes. They're almost like really bad nursing shoes. or Yeah, they were kind of like a really hard plastic. Yeah. <laughs> like... Oh, they're just bad. So when we finished, Jason took one. What? <laughs> he took one. He kept it in his room forever. And then yeah, when well, Steve signed it, he's like, Robin loves me more. Steve Burton. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It sat in my dressing room until I, 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 you know, I closed down that dressing room. But I still have it, man. It's, still, it's in my storage now. That, so let's tell the other story real quick because I, I know we've, we've told it. But was it during night shift? That I slept at your house? Yeah, 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 yeah. Night shift, yeah. It was one of those ones where it was like, you know, we shot for 22 and a half hours or something like that. And uh, where were you? You were down in or Orange County. Yeah, Orange County, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. and night shift was basically, you know, go home and sleep for five, six hours and come back and we're going to do it again for right. another 18 hours. So it was, right. uh, it was uh, yeah, come and, geez, come, and, come and stay in my place, man. I just bought this house. I've got no furniture and... And, uh, and I got, I got a room and I think Steve's first question was, do you have air conditioning? <laughs> and, and, uh, I was like, yeah, the master bedroom, you know, where I, where I sleep has, has a wall unit. He's like, yeah, okay, well, I'm going to need to sleep in there. But I was like, <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll sleep on the couch, dude. It's, it's fine. It's all good. So, uh, <laughs> oh, I, we, we hung out on the couch for a little bit and, you know, ate a bag of chips and had a couple of beers and then it was time to go to sleep and, about an hour before that, we cranked that AC on. So he went in there and you could have hung meat in that room. It was so cold. <laughs> Steve goes to bed, he's got the blanket pulled up. And you know, seven hours later, I walk in there and you, there was not a wrinkle in those sheets. He <laughs> just laid there like a mummy, passed out. <laughs> the room was so cold, dude. Dude, it was like, I got shivers going in there to wake you up that morning. I dude, remember. listen, I like the cold, but that was freaking <laughs> freezing. <laughs> And you slept like a baby. I slept. A, it's probably one of the best night sleeps I've ever had, yeah. by the way. Oh, that's so good. And then so back that, to work, man. That's the way it was. Yeah. That's amazing. So you started, oh, man, you started in 2005. And yeah. um, I mean, I don't know what happened with you and, and, and Kimberly, but something happened, right? I mean, there was, there was I, I don't want to use the word lightly, but there was a magic and a chemistry there and a relationship that you guys formed that was special. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was 100%. special, you yeah, know. Sure. 
and did you just become better friends obviously as you as you started working together and and the trust because it's not always like that i mean with with actresses or actors there's a certain amount of trust there there's a certain amount of vulnerability there um, which you guys had so much and you brought so much to 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 your scenes i mean what was that just like in the beginning just starting to work with her and getting to know her because obviously we had her on the, on on the podcast and i've obviously known her forever but for you guys, you guys had something special. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> well, first of all, a, a, a lot of that, especially in the beginning, was was Kimberly. I I was learning from one of the best, from somebody that had been doing it for a very, very long time, and she's a very accomplished actress in in in, in her own in her own way. And um, she's got she's very natural, she's very real, and so I was lucky enough to be with her in so so much of my early. The beginnings of General Hospital and we were you know given some really great story there and and you know it's there's a certain amount of um, nerves and, and a certain amount of fear that I had just getting the lay of the land as we all know it's a, it's a crazy way the way that we shoot and everything but also saying that I this character that I was so so fortunate to, to you know to bring life to he was a confident guy, you know what I mean? So yeah. I was able to kind of hide a little bit in there. And and that kind of, you know, powerful kind of chest up, I don't, you know, I'm going to do whatever kind of I feel like I got to do. Of course, that character had amazing vulnerability, which was probably felt a little more comfortable in my world. Yeah. So that character and with Kimberly, who she is, and she's tough and she knows what she's doing and she's straightforward and, and um, you know, look at what she's done now. She's, she's always had her, her, you know, her vision kind of skewed to that kind of directing world and, and storytelling. And so I look at it very fortunate to be able to work with her from the beginning and then had the trust of the producers and the writers and we were given really great story. And, um, you know, when you got great story, you, anything's possible. And, um, you know, I just kind of tried to keep learning, watching, watching you, Steve, and, and watching Mo, and watching Tony, and Jane, and, you know, Laura. It, it, I, was, I was surrounded by some really great people, and I was trusted in my own way to kind of be able to run with it at the same time. I had, like, the most, the toughest, sometimes itchy security blanket that Kimberly was, but it, she made me so much better. Yeah, dude, you... you... I mean, you're something special, man. I mean, you're an amazing actor. Uh, to watch you start from really, I don't want to say nothing, but with not a lot of experience and then turn into the actor you are today is phenomenal. Well, thanks, buddy. It's, uh, seriously, it is. It's, <laughs> it's, it's amazing to see what you've become. And, and, and I think uh, going over to Y&R, you were kind of able to stretch your wings a little more than you were as Patrick Drake. Yeah. I mean, some of that is in the character and some of that sure. is just my own personal feelings at the time about needing to do that. Sure. Needing to, to figure out if I could still do it. I figure out if I could still do something different than what I was doing, because we all know, like I, I still love going to work every day. The fact that we get to work, almost every day is just, you know, I still love doing that. At the same time, doing that for 10 years at General Hospital, as amazing as the opportunity was, I needed to figure out if I could, you know, change it up. If I could, if I could, if I could trust myself to push myself to a level to do something that scared me a little bit. Yeah, maybe a little bit of a sideways kind of step, but at the same time, I was nervous about it and I needed to kind of see if I was able to do it. And and you know, going over there was another awesome opportunity. Um, and uh, and the character did kind of help me change it up and and you know stretch, which was what I needed at the time. Yeah. What are the, what were the? Did you identify challenges right away with Billy that maybe were different than Patrick? What? Well, <clears throat> yeah. Quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, and, and not just in terms of like character, but in terms of like finding it in yourself, or yeah. like, did you? What did you learn about your? What, I don't know, we call it your process or yeah. your your approach that you're like, 
hmm, I, I have to either find this tool in me or build this tool because I didn't need it there and I need it here. Yeah, for sure. So I was actually, again, um, Kimberly was one of them that kind of pushed me to get back into acting class. This was about two years, two and a half years before I left General Hospital, I went back to class. I was going to class every Wednesday from like six to like one o'clock in the morning with um, an amazing teacher, Sharon Chatton down in Venice. And that got back into building the craft because that was the one thing that I never really did in the beginning. Um, it was a little bit more of, you know, going to commercial editions and going in that kind of thing. And then I had some acting class for a while, but it was more on camera. So when I got back into class again, it was more figuring out how to build from the inside out, how to build that character, how to, how to know you're right. Wife you know, all that kind of more, much more method kind of way. And, and um, that really changed my way of working, my way, my way of life in a way. I downloaded things differently. I took different notes. I tried to, I learned how to equate my real life experiences and bring those to my work. And, and that I guess doing the work and, and being able to go to class and being able to do that at General Hospital at the same time and continue to work, it really helped me to take a breath and start new with, with Billy character. Now, saying that, that character has been around for a long time. There's yeah, I mean, you know, three, four other characters that guys have already played that role. So that history was somewhat already there. Yeah. I had to figure out what that history was inside me. Like I had to try and equate what he had went through and make it personal for me stories that i will never really be able to replay but they're part of who this guy is so i had to find out what what it meant in in my own my own world my own life my own internal whatever so so yeah that was that was the challenge for sure you know gh patrick i was the first one to ever say the words and nobody else sure. had said them before and nobody right. said them since totally different yeah it is totally different it's a huge a lot Stepping into a, a a legacy character, right? Billy Miller yeah. was, won Emmys for it. Yeah, really created that character, and then there was a few people after him, and then you. Yeah. Um, and so it, it's it's never never easy to walk into somebody else's character and take no. over. No, and I mean you know, and 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 to be honest, thank God for those guys that did that, and Billy. Billy, you know, was the one that really brought that character to life, and. And I think at that point, like I knew that, I knew it was gonna be a challenge. I put my head down and I went to work. I mean, what, else you, what else you gotta do? I, I tried not to worry too much. You can't please everybody. And I tried to just kind of bring a certain sense of my own personal vulnerability to the guy. Um, he's a pretty, you know, he toes that line, that character, which keeps it really fun. At the same time, there's some broken pieces inside of him that he's always trying to mend that you know, as soon as he thinks he's got it figured out, they end up kind of breaking in his hands a little bit and pieces are everywhere. And, and I love that. I, I've never been really one personally to say, you know, my character doesn't really do that. I, I find the challenge in trying to figure out, well, why would he do this? You know, I don't want to put myself in a corner or a box. I want to go way over here and way over here so I can continue to try and like keep it moving and try and toe the line. That to me, personally it keeps it fun it keeps me personally engaged and right. so i i can only hope that it does the same for the audience but again if, if you go into these situations trying to please everybody it's 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 too hard and you're not going to yeah. end up doing it. you're not going to be true to yourself and in turn you're not going to be true to the character because you're playing for something different than what's happening in that moment and so i really try to just focus on that control what i could control and just let let go whatever whatever i didn't have any control over yeah it's interesting you know your perspective on uh the challenges are really growth they have yeah. to be growth to some degree right, right. like you're because you, there's plenty of people who say oh my character wouldn't do that well why don't we figure out like you just said why your character is doing this and it's not only going to be challenging for you then it will be engaging for yeah. the audience yeah for sure you, you know by default yeah well you'd hope so and if it's not, and it doesn't always work, sure. you know, and, and, but that's okay. And that's why I love what we do is because we, we'd have one take, let it live. Yeah. And then you're moving on. Yeah. And if that didn't work 
And we've had many, many times where I'm driving home or 30 seconds after, I'm like, oh, that didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that's okay. Yeah. You know, I'm going to go home and I'm going to learn my lines for tomorrow sure. and I get to go do it again. We've, we've all had that drive of shame for sure. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, and that's kind of what keeps it fun and it's challenging. And, you know, when it doesn't become challenging for you, I think you slowly kind of, you know, lose a little bit of your momentum and, and why I still think it's super important to live an interesting life still because all of that goes into the work. And, and I mean, I'm sure you guys feel the same, but there's not many days and even in times like this that I don't think about the character. Like, you know, I'll be doing whatever. And I'll be like, oh, that's kind of a, that's kind of a Billy Abbott moment right there. Or, or interesting. Man, the, way that guy, the way that guy's moving right there is kind of like, that's pretty interesting. You know, and I'll kind of keep that in my back pocket. And I don't know when I'll use it, but, you know, I just keep kind of adding things if I can, because it's interesting for me also. And, yeah. and, and there's something about what we get to do in a way of like living, living. Hi, buddy. <laughs> I got a sad face at the window waiting for me. Oh, oh. <laughs> amazing. Let me in. Let yeah, me exactly. In. Um, but yeah, so you know, I don't know when you're going to use it, but you know, again, it, it keeps it interesting for, for, for me personally, and I hope that makes it interesting for everybody else. And, and I think you, know, you can't, you got to make it interesting for the writers to want to write for you. You got to make it interesting to see like, oh, what's going to happen when we give them this? I don't yeah. know. Let's yeah. see. You know? and, 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 and that to me is, I think our, our genre has always done an amazing job. I mean, dude, how long is GH? 50, what, how many years now? 50, 57. Seven. I mean, come on, yeah. you know, wine ours have their 40, 45th, I think this or last week or whatever it was. And so you're telling a story for that long a time. Yeah. You're, pretty, you know, it's pretty amazing. It's amazing. You got to do your job and, you know, keep the train on the tracks. Man. Sure. Well, I love what you talked about in terms of um, you, you come from a very generous point of view when it comes to not just, not, not just making things interesting for yourself in terms of like, ah, well, I want to, I, I, I want to do my best and I want to bring something to this so that, I'm, I feel like I'm doing my best, but you're bringing something, being generous to the writers, bring, being generous to your scene partners, being generous. And, you know, I think it, after you've done this for a while, it's very easy to just kind of become complacent and, mm. not, and not see how you can um, feed the team as yeah. well as, as just show up. You're not just well, showing up. My favorite up. thing you're about not... all of this is the collaboration in it all. You know, yeah. that's like my favorite thing. Like sitting in the dressing room for an hour and a half before you go out there and working on it and trying to find something interesting with your scene partner is the best part. You For know, sure. that's the best. Yeah. And you go out there and you're like, okay, cool. Let's just see what happens. We did yeah. all that work. I mean, there's so many times we're like, well, that was totally different than what we kind of went, but great. Why not? You know? Yeah. And I mean, even directors and, and whoever you're working with their producers will come over and say, let's try this a little bit or, you know, and it's like, okay, cool. You know, and don't get me wrong. There's definitely times where you're just like biting your tongue. But it's um, in those moments too, it's like, okay, well, I'm going to use that right now. And um, that's exactly what this scene's going to be about, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. you know, and, and, but again, it's, it is that collaboration. And um, dude, there's too many cooks in the kitchen. It's, it's, it's not, you're not the only one just because you might put the plate on the table. You didn't, you're not the only one that cooked it, you know? So yeah. you got it, it. It was amazing to see, because uh, I, know, I know you were very, well, my experience was overall, I was very welcomed when I went to Young and the Restless. Yeah. You know, and uh, a few of those guys, one was Peter Bergman, who you work yeah. with a lot. Yeah. My you know, brother, so, yeah. yeah, he's so, you know, uh, Peter's such an awesome guy, such a generous actor, such yeah. a prof consummate professional, like everything. And, um, you know, to, to, I was happy that you got to work with him a lot. Yeah, man. He, uh, you know, again, you, you, you step on a new set. It's a little bit the same, of course. It's, it's a soap opera, but it's different. Um, there's different paces. I was, uh, I, I felt very fortunate to come from GH at that point because uh, I think that at that time, I don't know if it's the same or not, but we were a little bit more under the gun than what Young and the Restless was in a way. Correct. Maybe yes. not the best way of saying that, but yes. yeah, we were moving pretty quick. So so you had that energy and you, when I came over there, it was a little bit more relaxed, a little slower, which was nice, which was very, very comfortable, really comfortable set and, uh, and fantastic people. Um, yeah. Peter was one of them. Welcome. Yeah. Open arms, man. Um, yeah. 
all of the things that you said, professional, sweet, generous, so vulnerable it's with you on screen, off the screen. The amount of times we've been in our dressing room just talking and he's tearing up, just like the idea of what the scene might be, you know? Um, Gina and I worked together for a number of years, which was really one of those things that, you know, that just, it happened to work. Um, yeah. Jill was like, yeah, we're, we'll try it. Jill Fair Phelps at the time, and, and I think it was uh, Chuck at the time was writing. And um, it was like, yeah, let's see what happens. And, and again, of course, you know, Amelia, that Billy and Victoria have been around the bend a number of times. And, you know, she's got a new guy coming in and um, she was very open and welcoming to me and helped me out in so many ways. And I was working with Daniel Goddard a lot in the beginning there for a while. And he, you know, he's, he's got, he brings a lot of energy to the set for sure, but the guy knows his story and, yeah. and he's vocal about it and he wants to make it work. And I, you know, you just, you, you need those, you need those people. And then you bring, you take all that in and then you bring it narrow yeah. And now you're sitting at home and you've got these blank, these not blank pages, but these pages in front of you. And then you just got to figure out how to bring all that world together. And then you step on set and, you know, you try and remain as calm as possible and just see what happens. But that's, that's the magic of it, right? I yeah, mean, it is. It is. And I think that's what's, what's unique in daytime is everybody, we all understand what we have to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? So no matter what show you go to, yeah. there's going to be the same, hey, let's go. You know, go. you're on the team. You're, you're either going to be on the team or you're not going to be on the team. Let's yeah. roll, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and, and you don't really have much choice. No. And you know? it's just, you know, I think it's just the realization that it's just so much bigger than you is sure. one that you got to learn pretty early. Yeah. Because not knowing that you can have a pretty big ego and that ego can, you know, might get you through a couple situations. There might be times where you got to kind of use it, but majority of the time, that's really not the way to attack this world. And, uh, <laughs> yes, you know, so those people don't, don't last long. No, you know, you think you're tough for a couple minutes and then it's like, wait, what happened? <laughs> you know, how come I'm not working anymore? It's like, well, man, you know, how long did it, how long did it feel after taking over Billy? Did you feel comfortable in him in terms of like, all right, I'm not, and maybe, maybe it was immediate, but like I, with recasts, I, I can always imagine myself looking, looking outward in for a while going, am, do I look, am I, doing the, am I doing Billy right versus is this me? Do you know what I'm saying? And yeah, no, did it for sure. I, I, I do. And I, you know, I, I still am not 100% comfortable in that at all. I, I still probably, you know, and Peter's probably one to, because um, Peter was like, well, and that's another thing. Peter was a recast. Amelia was oh, a recast. Interesting. Gina was a recast. Um, who else? I mean, there's there's a handful of them over time. Um, and you know, Peter and I talked about it a couple times because, you know, you have those moments of um, I, I don't want to say weakness, but those moments where you're like, oh man, am I okay? Do they like me? Do they do they not? Am I am I being okay? Am I gonna lose my job? Are they gonna bring somebody else in? Like. You know, those moments still creep up every once in a while. Every time course, I'm yeah. thinking about it, I'm just like, Whew, okay. But all that does for me is I usually come home and I talk to my wife about it. And then she's like, all right, well, what do we got to do? Well, I just got to get back to work. That's I it, buddy. Head back down and I got to just make sure that I try not to give them any options. I got to, I just got to do the work. 